So in the third example of section four, we have uh, another version of the if statement, which is more complicated than the if else. And so we started with a situation where we just wanted to do one thing, maybe, one thing conditionally, either do it or skip it. And then with the if else statement, we moved on to a situation where we wanted to do something for sure, but we wanted to do one thing or the other thing based on whether or not a Boolean value was true. And the third and final situation is you have a bunch of things and you only want to do one of them. So the the chain of if, else, if statements and potentially an else on the end gives you the ability to say, well, I have all these cases, I have all these situations, and I just want to choose one based on uh, any number of conditions. So again, the like I like I said at the end of the last video, the important thing to remember is every if statement, which is this whole thing that I have highlighted here, is one if statement. Um, when you see if, all the else's are just chained on to that first if. So for every if statement, no matter how many chained else's there are, you can only hit one block of code. So the moment you hit any one of these blocks of code, it will then be done with this if statement. So if this condition is true, it will enter here. If not, it will proceed and try this condition and enter here. And if that condition is also false, it will finally come down here and unconditionally do the else. Um, if there was a condition here, I could put else if, but when you end with an else, it's basically a catch-all, else is always true, there's no condition there, it just does it. Point being though is, remember, always remember that as soon as you enter in any one of these, the whole if statement will be done and it will come down here to line 24 and proceed. So it's only possible to enter one of these three blocks for this situation. So this example here is uh, a three scenario situation where I have three situations and I can kind of divine what they are by what, it, what the output says. The output contains all lowercase letters of a string that they entered or the output contains all uppercase letters and so if, if I know both of those conditions are false the output is not all uppercase and the output is not all lowercase then there's only one condition left. There's only one possibility left and that's there is a combination of both uppercase and lowercase letters. That's why I have no condition here. I don't have an else if. I'm not saying else if input has uppercase letters and has lowercase letters. I don't need to do anything like that because I already know based on the failure of both of the first two conditions that the only possibility left is the output contains both upper and lowercase letters. So when you're constructing a big uh, chain like this, it does involve a little bit of um, getting the logic right in your head before you code it. Um, so I I said to myself, well, I already checked up here in this first case if we have all lowercase, and then I know I if that was not true, I checked to see if they're all uppercase, and if that was not true, then the only possible situation left is their upper and lowercase. So based on the failure of previous conditions, you can deduce for yourself what is the only possible situation left. So I think this would be easier if we debug through it, as usual. So I'm going to just type in some letters. And let's go with the second condition. So I'll type in just something with all uppercase letters. So I'm in my if statement now on line 11. And it's going to compare the string that I input to the all uppercase version of that string, which obviously are the same. So that's going to be true. Um, oh, I'm sorry, this one is too lower. So input to lower is going to be all lowercase. So all lowercase version of the input string is not equal to the all uppercase version. So since this condition is false, it's going to skip on down to line 15. Now we're going to try another condition. We're going to say is the input equal to the all uppercase version of itself. Well those should be identical so that will be true. So we'll enter into here, execute all the code between the begin and the end, and as soon as we hit the end 
and this is true of any one of these blocks, as soon as we hit any one of these ends, the entire if statement is done and it will skip down to line 24. Boom. So I just want to show you, it said the output contains all uppercase letters. So let's do that again, except this time let's do all lowercase letters. So now this first block is going to be true. The lowercase version of SDF, SDF is the same as what I input. So it's going to enter in this first block, say the output contains all lowercase letters, and then hit the end. And remember, you know, I, I want to hammer this home, every time you hit an end, the rest of the if statement is totally skipped over. You can only hit one block. So it's going to go from 14 all the way down to 24. Ding. Okay, and then let's try the last situation, which is the else. So now I'm going to run this. I'm just going to do a combination. So I'll say my name. Now I have both upper and lowercase letters. So that is not going to be equal to a completely uppercase, uh, completely lowercase version. So that will skip that one. That will not be equal to a completely uppercase version, so it will skip that one. But the else always gets hit. So if it makes it all the way to the bottom of the chain, and you have an else there, you don't need an else, but if you do put an else, the else will always be true. So the else is like, oh, nothing else worked, so let's just do this. And I know, just logically, just logically deducing for myself, that now the output must contain upper and lowercase, because both of these uh, conditions failed up here. And that is my first if else statement. So I have three cases, and I know only one of them is going to be true. So I could have stopped there, but I thought maybe we'll do one more to show you a four case scenario. So I thought to myself, maybe like a little truth table example. So in addition to checking uppercase and lowercase, I declared two Boolean variables to check for the existence of an A or a Z in the word that I typed. Now, as you can see here, I have a big chained if statement. It's only one if statement, but there's four situations here. The first situation says the word that I typed in contains an A and a Z. And the, in that case, I want to output the output contains both A and Z. The second case is there's an A, but there's no Z. The third case is there's no A, but there is a Z. And of course, there's only four possibilities in this truth table, so I know if those three are not true, then we must then the fourth one must be true. The output does not contain A or Z. I could have said this. I could have said else if, so that it would check if there's no A and there's no Z, then we should say there's no A and no Z. But this is redundant. This if statement here, this else if is redundant because just because of our logical analysis of the situation, we know that we can only get to this fourth condition if the other three are false. And if the other three are false, this one we know automatically is true. It's like saying, it's like telling somebody, I flipped a coin and it wasn't heads. So you know for a fact it's false. You don't have to say, um, oh, I flipped the coin and it wasn't heads. Let's check to see if it was false. You don't need to check to see if it was uh, you don't check, need to check to see if it was tails because you know by virtue of it not being heads that there's only two possibilities. So that same logic kind of extends to um, these multi-case scenarios. It doesn't hurt anything if you do uh, a redundant check, but it's a little bit less efficient because why do more work than you need to do? So I'm, I guess I won't go through all four of these permutations, but let me go through uh, the first one at least. So I type in my word and we'll say A, B, C, D, Z. <coughs> so it contains A should be true, it contains Z should be true because there is an A and a Z. So this if statement is going to be true. It's going to enter the first block. It's going to write the output contains both A and Z. And I want you again to remember that as soon as we hit line 30, which is the end of this block, the, this, the rest of the if statement is, is skipped. 
we only can we only can hit one block per if statement. So from line 30, it's going to jump down to line 44, All right? So it was both uppercase and lowercase letters, and it contained both an A and a Z. Let's see. How about let's do one where we hit line 35. So for that one to get hit, we would need no A, but a Z. So I'll say B, C, Z. <coughs> so it contains A is false, contains Z is true. So since this is false, the AND is false, and we're not going to go into line 28, we'll come down to the IF statement on 31 contains A is false, so we're going to skip that one as well. And now in the condition on 35, contains A is false, so not contains A is true, and contains Z is true, so that's true and true, which is true. So the whole condition is true. We'll enter the block on line 36, and we'll say the output contains Z, but does not contain A. Obviously, B, C, Z, all uppercase, contains Z, does not contain A. And now since we hit the end of that block, the whole if statement is over, and again, once again we skip down to 44. And then finally, let's do a situation where we hit the else. So to hit the else, all three of these conditions need to be false. So it can contain an A and a Z. It can contain an A and not a Z. It can't contain a Z and not an A. And the only other way that, the only other possible string is one that doesn't have any A's or Z's at all. That's why all we need here is an else. So if I run this, I'll just say um, Tani. There's no A's or Z's in my name. So it contains A is false for that one, so it'll skip it. Contains A is false for that one, so it'll skip it. Contains Z is false for that one, so it'll skip it. And the only situation left is that the output does not contain an A or a Z. So my name, Donny, contains both uppercase and lowercase letters, and the output does not contain A or Z. So these are two examples here, the first one being the uppercase and lowercase, and the second one being the um, whether or not they have an A or a Z, where we have a number of scenarios. In this case, we have three scenarios where we want to choose one block of code based on some information to run. So just as a quick review, in this first if statement, we have three situations, either all lowercase or all uppercase or a combination of both. And we want to choose one of those situations based on examining our input. So we construct our if else if statement to choose one scenario based on the data that we have at hand. Similarly, in a more complicated scenario, where we have four distinct situations, we can do the same thing. We say, we know we have one of these situations. We know there, there's either going to be um, both an A and a Z, or neither, or just an A, or just a Z. Those are the only four possibilities, and we want to choose one of them, and based on which one of those situations we're in, we want to execute some code. So we have four blocks of code, only want to choose one of them. That's what these these big chained if else if statements are for. So it's not really uh, the situation and the concept and the idea is the same as the if statement. It's still conditionally executing code, but kind of the the mechanic of the statement is um, has a different uh, situational relevance. So a pure, just plain old if statement with n no else's at all is just like, I either want to do this or I don't want to do this. When you have an if and an else, it's usually just, I want to do either this or that. I want to do one of them, but I'm not sure which one. It depends on, on the condition. And when you have a big chain of if else ifs like this, it's usually, I have uh, a variety of situations and I want to choose one of them based on the state of my program and based on the information, the current values of a variable uh, or based on a boolean expression. So this is, you know, a lot of, obviously most of the 
things that you do in programming contain logic. Um, you say, I want you to do this, or do this, or do this, based on whether or not this is true or false. So being able to master uh, simple logical statements like this is kind of the gateway to, to being able to understand more complicated techniques, to being able to manage complex logical situations. And as, you know, as complexity grows, we learn techniques to um, handle that. For example, in programming, if, if I go to work and I open up a, a file and I see, you know, this isn't too bad, but if I see uh, an if, else if, else if, else if, and I see like all of these chained if statements that are very hard to read and very hard to follow, I say to myself, this is bad code, and I need to think of a way to make this simpler and more readable. And But the ability to do that is based upon the um, your ability to understand at least what the core logic is. So you have to be able to read this type of thing, you have to be able to write this type of thing, and being able to master that will lead to the the next level of things, and that's being able to understand ways to transcend this and implement techniques that accomplish the same things, but are much more manageable, much more maintainable, simpler, easier to read. But they're all based on uh, understanding and being able to uh, formulate logical constructs of this type. So I would say before we go on to example four, if anything in example one, two, and three doesn't make sense, make sure you review it over and over and over again, debug, debug through it as many times as you can until you have it completely mastered, um, because that's definitely going to be important uh, going forward in programming if you don't understand how to navigate these logical constructs, you really want to do it now uh, or else you're going to get lost later. As you'll see in the next, next example when we do nesting, um, it's kind of based on this and, and then gets worse, <laughs> of course. So, uh, like I said, try to, try to make sure that you have this mastered before moving on to the next video.